Hello everyone, welcome to the studio. I feel like painting flowers today. Would you like to join me? Because I'm going to show you a way to paint flowers in six easy steps. We're going to be using pastel. I'm going to be working on unsanded paper. And I'm going to be using a variety of pastels, which I'll share with you. But the main thing to remember is it's just six easy steps. And it's going to give you a successful flower painting. So I'm come on closer to the easel and I'll show you what I have <coughs> already started. I'm going to be inspired by this photo of some poppies. Now I'm going to take out my artistic license and take liberties with the photo. I'm really only using the photo to just kind of show me the shapes of the flowers, the colors in the flowers, but I don't want this background. In fact, I want to make that just sky. Um, and I've rearranged the flowers to fit on a landscape format just for something different. And I've rearranged the shapes of the flowers, which I've drawn in with a piece of um, soft vine charcoal, so that I can have a more interesting arrangement of shapes. I want a variety of sizes of the flowers, and I want them to be kind of in an arrangement that helps move your eye through the painting. So that's what I have focused on. So, oh, by the way, I'm working on the smooth side of Canson. Uh, me tent unsanded paper so the smooth side now six easy steps how are we going to start this painting that's always the hard part where do I begin well with six easy steps you're going to just do um, I'll go over the steps first then I'll then I'll take you through them. number one block in the dark areas number two block in our light areas number three block in the areas that are, have the most intense color number four you should then be left with should be a middle value so you'll block that in with one color so that your painting has one full layer even though it's a light layer we're going to use a light touch for all these first layers now we're on number five number five just means simply build your painting so start adding layers start adding detail remember we started with big simple shapes no detail now we're going to start to add the detail and number six is when we get to a certain point in the painting and we're not quite sure what else to do we step back we evaluate and then we come in and add those finishing marks so six easy steps let's get started so i'm going to block in all of the dark areas i'm going to start by using uh, Rembrandt pastels which are a harder pastel and uh, that will allow me to get more layers on this unsanded paper because I'm using a, a pastel that doesn't have quite as much pigment so it'll be a thinner layer. So I'm going to start with a dark red and so where are the dark areas? Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky with this particular scene. See all of this here in the foliage? I see little bits and pieces of dark. Here's a dark, here's a dark, here's a dark. If I were to do it like that, here's a dark, here's a dark, here's a dark, it would be very spotty. But I know that I need this foundation so that I can build my layers of, of foliage. So I'm actually going to make this whole bottom area dark, including up towards the sky. Like I want to kind of cradle all these flowers in a dark value. Why? Because that's going to help. I, I call this when I paint flowers, this is the dirt, right? What else is dark? Well, we have a dark center right there. A little bit of dark on the top of those guys. Maybe a dark center right in there. Now, I can always add flowers. I can always take flowers away. This is just my initial arrangement, but it kind of gives me a good idea of, of uh, where I'm going. All right, so here's all the dark values. That's step one. Number two, step two is all the light values. Now the light values are going to be the sky. The sky is going to be the lightest value in this painting. So I'm substituting all of this uh, building that's behind there and I'm gonna make that sky. I'm actually gonna, before I do that, I wanna move that dark area up slightly. All right, so let's block in the light areas. I'm gonna use a pink, which is a lighter value of the red. Sometimes it's easy just to pick one value, or excuse me, one color for your block-in, which is, I'm calling this the block-in. If I pick one color, but just select four values, or three or four values of that color, it, it kind of makes it easier. Um, so having the pink doesn't mean I'm gonna leave the sky pink. I can make it blue if I want to, but 
Uh, this is just a, <clears throat> a value map. Basically, this is what we're doing here. We are creating a map that shows us where the dark areas are, where the light areas are, where the most colorful areas are. Uh, no detail, just shapes of light and dark. All right, so we're on step three, right? So step three was where is going to be the most intense color? So when I look at my scene, I feel like the most intense color is going to be where the sunlight is hitting some of the petals, especially in this big flower here, maybe a little bit over here, and a little bit over here. But that seems to be the most intense color, that really uh, warm, intense yellow-orange. Where else is there an intense color? There's, there's some intense color in some of the green stuff. I'm, I'm going to make these little pods. Uh, oops, that's supposed to be a flower. I'm going to make them bright green just to show me that that's going to have a little bit more color to them. All right, so where are we? We're um, on step three now, right? No, we did three. We're on step four, which is now everything else. Everything else should be a middle value, so it's not a super dark, it's not light, it's somewhere in between. That would be the remaining flowers and the remaining, some of the, uh, all of the foliage, all the leaves and, and um, pods and things like that. Those are details that I'm going to add later. So at this point, I really only need to block in the the flowers and I'm going to go with a little bit this is a little bit lighter value red than what I already used so I'm going to block in the remainder of these flowers with this red remember I'm trying to I'm not I don't want to fill the tooth of the paper so you can still see the the um, the color of the paper underneath my marks and then that's how I know that I'm keeping a light enough touch. I'm looking at my arrangement of shapes right now and I want to make sure that I don't have anything lined up. I don't have things that are too similar and these guys here seem a little bit similar. So let's throw another guy in here just to break up that party. And hmm, these guys kind of end up at the same height so let's move this flower make it a little bit bigger. Maybe maybe make it go off the page a little bit. So then we have a little bit different shape and it's not lined up at the top. All right. So we're still on step four. So what I'm, I'm going to take an additional step. Well, part of step four is I'm going to just blend in this whole thing. And I'm using a piece of pipe uh, insulation foam. The stuff you wrap around your pipes to keep them from freezing. It makes a really good blending tool, although I only use it in the very beginning of the painting. I find that if I use it to blend things um, after the painting has had several layers, it tends to just make mud. Gets things muddy and yucky. Why am I blending in this first layer? Number one, I want to push the pigment into the surface of the paper a little bit more so I can have more uh, tooth. The second reason is I like to have a nice blurry, out of focus start or block in or underpainting. Because now I can decide where I want to put that clarity and where I want to put the focus. And I'm on now step five where I'm starting to build up my layers. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, move on to using some softer pastels. This is Terry Ludwig pastels. This is the floral landscape set that I um, curated so I, I should be good to paint some flowers in the landscape with this set. So the first thing that I do when I'm starting to build my layers is I always go in and I reinforce the dark areas. But I'm going to start to layer different colors within each area because I want to have a nice optical blend of color. I don't want it to just be, when I look at the scene, what is it? It's green, right? It's a lot of green stuff. If I painted it all just green, right out of the box, it might not be as interesting if I start to mix and layer color. So where else is it dark? Right there in that center. We gave that guy a little center. Let's give this guy a little center too. Just kind of throw it off a little bit. So I'm using a very light touch because I still want to see the layers of color underneath. Um, now I'm going to add another layer of dark. I'm going to go ahead and put in a darker burgundy. I'm also starting to pull up some of this 
dirt layer just so that I can have an uh, interesting uh, shape here that I can pull the sky down into. Alright, so it's green, so let's go ahead and satisfy our need to make it green. So I've got a dark value green that I'm going to put in. Remember, no details, no stems, no leaves, no petals, no grass, just big simple shapes. We're still on the big simple shape. Uh, there's another layer of green. Alright, now, before moving on to the light areas, the next thing I ask myself is, okay, in this uh, painting, is there anywhere that's much darker than anywhere else? Um, and if there is, then I'm going to put in uh, a really dark value. It's almost black. It's Terry Ludwig Pastel. I think it's V100. It is commonly known as the eggplant color. And so I'm going to make the centers that dark. I'm also going to darken right down here at the base. In other words, where the eye moves into the painting. I really want to anchor it to the edge of the paper. Alright, so now we're done with that. So now we can move on to our light areas, which happens to be the sky color. I'm only going to do one quick layer of sky color and then I'll come back and refine the flowers and then we might need to go back over the sky. So I'm going to ask myself, do I want this to be a moody day? Do I want it to be a sunny day? And, um, because the sky is going to set the mood, the tone, the feeling of the, of the whole uh, painting. So we need to decide early on and, and setting the sky color is going to do that. Um, I want these flowers to look like they're sunny, kissed with sunshine, bright and, and cheerful. In order to do that, I really need to make the sky blue, right? That makes sense. So I'm going to come in over that pink with a nice blue. And I do know that the sky is going to get a little bit lighter and warmer as it goes closer to the horizon. So I lighten it up a little bit and then I'm going to come in with a warmer blue. This is a pale turquoise. Oops, almost lost that guy. And I'm going to use these the, the color to start to carve into this dark shape just to add a little bit more variety to the um, the grasses. And I'm actually going to probably pull it down pretty far. And then I'm going to come back with the green and the foliage to just to uh, pull it all together. These are considered sky holes. If you paint trees, you know about sky holes. But we use sky holes when we paint other things. A lot of times we don't think about it that way. But that's that's what we're doing here is breaking up one shape with another color what's behind it in this case the sky all right so we've got the darks back in place we've got the lights back in place now what we need to do is start to build in more color and I'm going to go ahead and start building color within the flowers I'm going to start with the um, that center right in there. It's actually not all one big dark shape. It's got a little bit of a kind of a peachy quality to it, maybe even a purplish color. So I just really want to put that in there for now. All right. Also, I think I'm going to build up my green stuff a little bit more before I do the flowers. And add a little bit more green to my area in here. And let's make it a little bit lighter and warmer with the green. Still, I'm not painting leaf shapes yet. Still painting big, broad strokes. We'll get to the leaves. We'll get to stems. All right, here we go. Let's do the flowers. Now, I'm going to paint the petals of the flowers using the side of the pastel, making uh, broad strokes kind of to duplicate how I see the petals are growing. 
Now the, this one particular poppy, this big guy here, it's got really weird folded petals. Now I can do that if I want, but if I don't like the way it looks, look at some of the other poppies and see if they have more interesting petals and shapes. You're not tied to copying what's right in front of you. You can use other the other flowers as inspiration. Now why am I starting with this dark? In fact, I, I'm starting with the dark and I've covered up my first layer. You might be wondering, why did I even bother with a first layer if I'm going to cover it up? Well, the first layer kind of sets the sets me up, right? It's a setup. It's also where it peeks through the other layers, it adds interest. Um, so I'm going to continue, and now this time I'm getting a little bit slightly lighter, slightly warmer, slightly more intense. And I'm just kind of using the side of my pastel and also want to keep in mind I want different petal shapes, different sizes to each flower. We don't want them to be all the same shape and size. These guys are hidden in the grass, right? So I'm blocking them in but I'm not going to add detail to them. All right, we're going to kick it up a notch. We want these guys to look like they have sunlight on them. So what we're using is a warmer, more intense red rather than using a lighter red. And if you're interested in learning more about this whole idea of how do you get something to glow with sunshine, I think I have a video on that and I also cover it um, in some of my Patreon lessons. So. I'd love for you to become a Patreon insider because we've got a lot of great painting demos and information in there over well, four years now. So there's a lot of interesting painting demos and lessons. It's a great community. All right, now I can tell this paper, unsanded paper, is starting to um, get filled with pastel so the marks are having a harder time going on so I'm going to spray some workable fixative light very lightly and I'm using uh, Blair very low odor workable fixative normally use it outside but for the sake of this video I've got a very large ventilated studio so I'm going to be fine for this demo um, you don't want to spray it on too too much if it gets too wet it will buckle the paper and it will defeat the purpose because you won't be able to put pastel on top. You want to have a light touch. But what this is going to do is going to fix all of these dark areas in place. So now when I come back over, I'm going to have more tooth and the pastel is going to stick to it a little bit better. All right. We'll let that dry a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to kick it up a notch. We really want to kiss it with sunshine, so now again, instead of going lighter in value, meaning pink, we're not going to use pink or coral or any light value color. We're going to use a more intense, warmer color. We're going towards the sunshine here and using a yellow-orange, only in the areas where I want it to be kissed with sunshine, so not in these shadowed uh, flowers. They really wouldn't be getting as much um, sunshine. Where is the sunshine? Well, we need to decide that uh, and so I make the executive decision that it's coming over here from our I want this petal to go off the page. It's coming over from our left so this pe this uh, this is bent in a weird way so this part wouldn't be getting the sun. I'm going to darken that just a little bit. All right now we still have big simple shapes we are still in step five where we're building up our layers now I can get more layers now that I use the fixative I'm going to go ahead and move towards our green stuff so we need to put in some of our we need to define some of our stems and our our pods so I'm going to put a few of those green shapes in now one thing when we paint flowers that we have to keep in mind is we have, when we start to add the foliage and we start to add the stems uh, that we're going to cover some of this stuff up, right? Because if, um, let's add the stem in here first. So I'm going to draw the stem for this guy right through on top of these other ones. So that's going to set them behind. It's going to create a little bit more depth, right? 
if I were to have put the stems, <clears throat> it, I don't want everything floating on top of the page. And another thing, when you're doing stems, you don't want balloons, so you want to create broken lines, right? So when you press, you want to press and release, press and release, so you get a nice variety in your lines. All right, so now we're going to make some different type of marks to get some indication of some of the, the leaf, leaf shapes in here. I'm just changing my marks, adding interest and variety to them. Get a little bit um, warmer, so this is a more of a yellow orange. Let's just add a few more. I'm going to hit a little light on the edge of that particular stem over on this guy. Give him a little bit of light. We need to work on the center a little bit more. We lost some of that darkness, so let's restore some of that. And some of these green things are a little bit cooler, right? They're not they're not a yellowy green, they're more of a blue green. So let's throw in some of those little marks just to give a little relief to all that warm green. Make a few more variety in my shapes. And I have two more one more step to go, right? So what was step number seven or six? I'm giving you an extra step. Step number six was to step back, evaluate, come back with fresh eyes, and then come back and make those finishing marks. So I'm going to take a minute and step back, and then we'll come back and finish. All right, I, st I, I stood back, I evaluated, and decided what I need to do. And what I need to do is work more on my main focal flower. So a little bit more clarity in this guy. And then how do we get to our focal flower? Like, this is where I want you to go. Well, this guy's kind of pointing us to that direction. What else can we use to point us and to lead us from this area up to this area? So this is kind of, I need a little more clarity in this area as well. So I'm going to move to using this uh, Sennelier half stick set. These are even softer pastels. So these are going to be good for those finishing marks because they go on with more pigment so they go on thicker. I can get a different quality to my mark. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this flower a little bit more and add a little bit more clarity and detail. You notice this red is much more intense and it's softer so it really goes on. Okay, I want to pull you over here so I'm going to add a little bit of that color there. I'm going to add a little touch of it there. See how these colors are now just jumping out at us. If I just add a touch of it down in here, it just makes more interest in this area where it was lacking. But I really want to kiss it with sunshine, so I'm going to go back with the orange, but a softer version, and see if I can't get some really thick marks. Almost a textural quality to the marks when you can press really hard. So these guys are starting to come alive now. Okay, we need to work on the centers a little bit more. I had a, kind of like a peachy color that was in the interior, but I'm, look, I'm, I see a kind of blue, um, really pretty blue-violet. So I just want to put that guy in there, a little touch of it right in here. Um, okay, I need to clarify, add a little more clarity to this guy right in here, and I need to get a, a more detail down in the, the grassy area. 
for where the foliage is. Also, remember earlier on, I said I needed to um, come back with the sky. This guy looks cut off. I'm going to have it go right off the page. Mm, actually, I changed my mind. I'm not going to go off the page. I think it might be better if I make it smaller. It was kind of a weird shape, so I really need to press hard to get the pastel to stick. But I do want it to... Um, I wanted to reinforce the color in my sky. Now one thing I could have done better is use a um, a brush to brush off that dark pastel before I put the blue sky over it and I might go back and fix that. Alright, I'm taking my sky, I'm pulling it down <coughs> Excuse me, into the flowers, oops, not on top of the flower, but in and around the flower, doing some negative painting to just open it up a little bit, give it some, let some air, let some sky go down and, and uh, make this a more interesting shape. I couldn't have done this part early on because I didn't know exactly where I want the foliage to go. How far down did I want it to go? So now I've got the sky in place. Let's go back with some more of that foliage that we're working on. I lost my stem, which is okay. Add some leaf marks up in here. Remember, point us into the painting. That's always a good thing. Think about where you want your viewer's eye to go. That's something you always want to keep in mind. It's going to help you create a more interesting flow and a more interesting visual journey for your viewer, which is something that I strive for. Let's see, add a little bit more of lighter value, a little bit of a different green in here just to break all this up. Now here's where it gets tricky. I could do this all day long adding leaves, adding grasses, but you have to kind of know when to stop. Uh, and what I like to do when I'm in this stage is step back frequently. That's going to be the key. Now I've just moved back to those Rembrandt pastels. You know the ones I started with? I like to use them at the very end because it really lets me get some nice linear mark making. What I'm going to do is actually pull some of those green uh, grasses up over my flowers. And what this is doing, hopefully, is creating depth within this whole mass of flowers so that they don't look like they're all floating on top of one another, but instead there's just um, a whole deep Trying to think of the right word. There's a wildness to it all, right? There's just um, kind of like chaos, but a, a deeper chaos. But it makes sense. I don't want it to look flat. I think that's pr probably what I'm getting at here. I want there to look like you can reach your hand down into the it, through the grass and and maybe pull a flower out that's back in the in the distance. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and refine our major flower by adding some texture and a few harder edges. Because you know the eye is drawn to a hard edge, right? So I don't want hard edges everywhere, but I do want them where I want you to look. So I'm going to make some of them hard, like right over here. So you look up here. I need a hard edge maybe down in here, maybe a touch down in here so that we have something to look at. All right.
I think, oh, one more thing. This is the fun part. We need to make these little, uh, I don't know what you call these little things within the center. Seats. Little seats. And, and I'm going to just put a, a nice bit of blue in there because it looks good with all the other colors. And we get that nice detail. I'm going to just make the stem a little bit sticker, thicker. It has to hold the weight of this big flower. And it got it got skinny. But I think I'm going to stop right now. Um, let's review. Six easy steps. What did we do? We did a drawing so that we got an interesting arrangement of flowers. We blocked in all the dark areas. We blocked in the light areas. We put in the most intense color. Then we started to build those layers till we got the level of detail that we were happy with. Now I could go on, I could make it photorealistic if I wanted to, but I like to stop and leave it more uh, of an expression of how I feel about these flowers. Number six, come back with fresh eyes, reevaluate, and put in those important finishing marks. And there you have it, six easy steps to flowers. I hope you try this. I hope you have fun. Again, I invite you to join us over on Patreon. We've got a great community of artists, um, lots of fun, lots more of this kind of thing. And I, I'll look for me next video. I hope you have fun with this one, and let's paint.